There's more to the Disney cruise ships than you think. Major secrets are lurking in those mega ship corridors that you need to know about before you set sail. Otherwise, you might be missing out on some of the best things there. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we're about to go on a Disney cruise. That's right, you and me sailing the seven seas side by side. But this isn't a typical, I don't know what to expect type of cruise. This is one where all the hidden secrets across all the Disney ships so far will be revealed. That way, all your future Disney cruises from here on out will be, say it with me, smooth sailing. But before we get started, we've got a gift for you. Scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash cruise planning and you'll receive our free DCL, that's Disney Cruise Line Ultimate Guide, packed with onboard activity tips, cruise planning timelines, and pro advice that'll fit any Disney cruise you decide to go on. Okay, secret number one, did you know you can order Mickey ice cream bars anytime you want them? There's something that the Disney Cruise Line offers that lots of other cruises can't compete with, and that's free room service 24 seven. The only time room service won't be available for you is on debarkation morning, the day you get off the ship. So don't expect to order any breakfast straight to your room on the day you're gonna leave. But any other day you're out at sea or at your overseas port of call, go ahead and order any time of day. You can find the in-room dining menu on your Disney Cruise Line Navigator app, which you'll for sure need to download ahead of your trip, but you can also find room service options on the physical menu that's already in your stateroom, most likely in one of the main drawers. If it's not already laying out in the open for you, it'll be inside like that big book that tells you all kinds of stuff. But get this, there are secret menu items that you can order straight to your room for free that you're not necessarily going to find on either the Navigator app menu or the physical one. If you want one of those classic Mickey premium bars, go ahead and order one or a few. They may not be listed as a dining option, but the Disney cruises absolutely have them and they are ready to hand them out to whoever wants them. Now, just so you're super clear on how room service operates on Disney Cruise Line, here are a couple of extra things you need to know. First, remember that menu items can vary for your specific cruise. So what you had on the in-room dining menu for one cruise may not be the same as on another cruise. It's usually very, very similar. I think you'll be surprised just how similar, but if you are in a different country, like maybe you're cruising in Europe or New Zealand, then it's very possible that your menu could be a little bit different because they're sourcing the ship from a different location. And secondly, even though room service is free, it's always important to have gratuity ready for those dining deliveries. Next secret, choose the stateroom that's least likely to get you sick. This isn't specific to Disney Cruise Line, but it's a tip you can use on any cruise you decide to go on in the future. If you're worried about getting seasick or you know you're prone to seasickness from past rather unpleasant experiences, choosing the right stateroom might help ease your nauseous tummy. So when you're about to book a cruise and you're in the select stateroom stage, those cabins near the center of the ship could be better on your stomach versus the ones on either end. That's because ships tend to roll from side to side, making movement much more prevalent when you're situated more towards the forward or aft parts of the ship. Lower decks are also generally recommended until you go below the waterline into the crew areas. The lower decks are less prone to movement than upper decks, but some people can feel a bit claustrophobic on the lower decks too. So consider choosing the lowest deck you feel comfortable with and which might provide you with easy access to dining areas or other spaces on the ship you'll be making heavy use of. Some people might also feel more movement when they can't physically see the waves they're sailing across. So if you feel like that may be the case for you, consider a room with windows or a balcony. Though some of Disney's inside staterooms on select ships have magic portholes available, which will give you a virtual look out at the water, plus Disney friends who will pop in to say hello, it might not provide you with the same effect as literally looking out of a real window or balcony. Okay, bring the correct charging cords. This is something that I run into all the time. Depending on which ship you choose to sail aboard, whether it be the newest Disney Wish, the slightly older Dream and Fantasy, or the OG Magic and Wonder, you may have to pack different chargers to get your phones, tablets, and laptops all juiced up for your group. 
The Wish is gonna have the most plug-in options for you. You'll have your standard outlets, your USB ports, and a few USB-C ports too, to charge up those newer devices that you might have taken on board with you. For the Dream and Fantasy, you won't have those USB-C ports most likely, but you will have the regular USB and plug-in ports. Typically, you'll find these by the desk area and near the main beds. The same goes with the Magic and Wonder. You should have both standard outlets and USB ports at your disposal. Now, there may be extra hidden plugins that you've got to go on a scavenger hunt to find around your room. They tend to hide behind the TV, inside cubby holes, and lurk around other little crevices throughout your room. I've even found one tucked inside the shelf under the tray with the glasses and stuff next to the closet before. So if you feel like you're not seeing a whole lot of standard outlet options readily available to use, that's probably because the other outlets are busy hiding. Now, you're probably going to need to bring a USB splitter with you to charge multiple devices at once since USB ports could be limited, again, depending on your stateroom and ship. But notice I said USB splitters are a-okay to use. What's not okay are power strips. Do not pack a power strip with a surge protector with you and plan on using it inside your room. You also can't bring other major electrical items like extension cords or rice cookers since they increase the risk of fire. The whole list of no-no items can be found on the Disney Cruise Line website. And I'll tell you, a lot of people try to bring clothes steamers. They're gonna take those too. If you do bring one of these red flag items on board, even by accident, they will be confiscated from your bag and the delivery of your luggage up to your stateroom will be delayed. Speaking of contraband and confiscated stuff, Story time. Yeah, that's right. I've got personal experience with confiscated luggage. I'm living on the edge here, folks. Now, before you start raising those eyebrows at me, let me explain. This is actually my mother's fault. I went on a cruise with my mom last year and she had her checked bag confiscated. We didn't know where her bag was. We had already set sail and the bag had not been delivered to our room. She had a bunch of medication in that bag and we were like, did it get left at the port? What in the world is going on? Where's the bag? And we're freaking out, right? It really kind of ruined our, you know, sail away experience. But thank goodness, it finally did get delivered to our stateroom after 8 p.m., which is a long time to wait on stuff, especially when you consider that luggage starts to get delivered to staterooms at like one. And the reason for her luggage delay? She packed a pair of scissors in her bag to cut the tags off her new vacation clothes. Practical, but not Disney Cruise Line legal. And probably not even practical. Come on, mom, cut off the tags before you pack the clothes. Now, while scissors are okay to pack on your checked luggage for a flight, they will be confiscated during a cruise and you won't be able to pick them up or any other prohibited items until you get off the ship and back into the port. If you accidentally pack a prohibited item, Disney isn't gonna automatically assume you're a bad seed passenger. They're gonna hold onto your item, deliver your luggage to your room really late after it's been thoroughly scanned and give you a little receipt. The end of your cruise, show this receipt to a cast member before you disembark so they can reunite you with your contraband items. But my biggest word of advice, before you panic about your missing bags, make sure that guest services is checking the confiscated luggage area of your cruise ship for you. And again, don't forget to check the list of prohibited items on the Disney Cruise Line website so you don't have to share the same fate that my mom did. Trust me on this. It is no fun to panic about all your stuff going missing while you're literally in the middle of the ocean. Now let's talk next about fancy coffee and the secrets involved there. If you're more than satisfied with just a basic black cup of joe in the morning, then great. You can get that at the casual dining options aboard Disney Cruises at either Cabana's or Marceline Market, depending on who you're cruising with. But if you're wanting the real high-end stuff, like the cappuccinos or cold brews or lattes or the coffees with the cute little characters in the foam, you're gonna have to get those over at premium cafes aboard your ship. And these specialty drinks will cost you extra and are not included with that all-inclusive price. That being said, there are still ways to get free specialty coffees on board the ships. Ask about the Cove Fantastic cards over at the Cove Cafe, the adults only coffee, tea and cocktail lounge that you'll find on all five of the ships. These loyalty cards reward you after purchasing five specialty drinks, which may be easier to accomplish than you realize. With each drink, you can get your card stamped and once you've collected your fifth stamp, redeem your card to get a drink on the house or on the ship. You can also use the Cove Fantastic card at the Vista Cafe too, which is available aboard the Disney Dream and Fantasy. 
I know it's hard enough to say goodbye to Castaway Key when your time on the private island wraps up for the day, but don't turn your back on the island completely before your ship starts sailing away again, because there's a fun secret that happens most of the time. When your ship leaves Castaway Key, be sure to watch as the ship pulls out of the dock. Some of the Castaway Key cast members back on the island will don Mickey gloves and wave farewell. Well, see you real soon. Also, you know when some ships blare that Disney song through their horns when it starts to head off towards sea? Stick around outside for a bit when your ship leaves Castaway. You may hear your ship play more than one Disney song, like Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes, A Pirate's Life for Me, It's a Small World, and maybe more. It depends if you're sailing on the fantasy or the dream or the wish or the treasure coming up in December. Again, what songs you get to hear all depend on what ship you're sailing on, making it fun and different every time. All right, we're back and talking about drink hacks again, but hey, while out at sea, these are vital to know. When you're at one of the Disney Cruise Line bars, ask about the sommelier bin. The sommelier bin is designated for open bottles of wine. If a guest orders a particular type of wine that hasn't been opened yet, then the rest of that bottle will need to be used on the same day to guarantee its freshness. And that means you can sometimes get a really pricey glass of wine for a really discounted price if you order whatever's in the sommelier bin during the time of your visit. Your mileage on this may vary because sometimes you'll just end up with a standard wine that you could have gotten literally anywhere else, but still, you get wine either way and for a potentially cheaper price too. Again, this isn't a guarantee, but it doesn't hurt to check. Disney doesn't put out discounts for their cruises as often as they put out discounts for their parks, but that doesn't mean cruise discounts don't exist, so we've got some cheap cruise secrets for you. The easiest way you can track these rare discounts down and apply them to your next vacation is by booking your trip through a travel agent service. We always do it through Small World Vacations. Our agents offer their services free, but they already know what discounts are out and available to help you get a good deal for your trip. Even better, if you book your cruise and a promotion or deal gets released after that booking, your agent will often rebook your cruise for you so you can end up getting some of that money back. And you might actually earn money by booking a cruise through Small World Vacations. Now that last point sounds too good to be true, but let me explain. Travel agents often offer bonuses for people who book cruises through them, which is basically free ship credit that you can spend on things like special beverages, dining in signature restaurants, that expensive coffee and that wine, and more. You can get anywhere from $50 to $1,000 in onboard credit depending on the cruise you book. If you're looking to snag a Disney cruise pronto, make sure you visit our friends over at Small World Vacations for a quote and they can help you plan your cruise from start to finish and get you the best deals possible. I'll go ahead and add their link down in the description for you and you can thank me later for all that savings. Now, are you ready to relax? Because I am. If you want to experience a Disney Cruise Spa Day without paying a super steep price for it, I've got a little cheat for you. Every Disney Cruise has an adults-only senses, salon, and spa where you can book one-on-one -on -one spa treatments and massages and facials and body wraps and aromatherapy stuff. And as relaxing as these treatments are, they also cost a ton of money. Just to give you a little taste of what these prices look like, facials will range around $125 to $165. The cheapest massage you can get is $195, and the most expensive is $459. Body therapies average around $151 to $259. You get the idea. You'll have to add a lot of Benjamins to your piggy bank to save back for these types of treatments. And hey, you may really want to do that. Like I said, spa treatments are super relaxing, and that's what a vacation's all about, right? Maybe? But if you're looking for a spa day that's under $40, bucks, you can get a single day pass for the Senses Spa Rainforest Room, which will still provide you with a rejuvenation day inside a thermal suite featuring saunas, steam rooms, and sensory experience showers. Some rainforest passes may also be available that'll give you access to the rainforest room all cruise long, but again, it all depends on the ship and sailing. While prices for this room are subject to change, it's still a much cheaper alternative to the full-on spa sessions. There's just nothing like sitting in the hot tub at the spa as the ship is sailing out of port and you get to watch the sunset. It's just amazing amazing and there's never a lot of people in there at that time of day because they're either at dinner or they're at a show. So you can get it all to yourself. There's another little secret. I'll see you there. 
Much like the Disney parks, there are several Disney Cruise Line activities you're going to want to book way ahead of your trip to make sure you get to experience them. These can sell out really fast, so we're going to tell you the secrets to getting them. Premium offerings like adult exclusive dining, the It's a Small World nursery, port adventures, spas and salons, select character meet and greets, and beverage tasting seminars require you to prioritize reservations since they can book up fast, like those fancy dining reservations in the nursery or the beverage seminars for sure. So here's how you can improve your chances of getting the reservations you want before you step off toward the trip. Step one, know the earliest you can book. The time you get to start booking your extra cruise activities all depends on your Castaway Club member status. The more cruises you've been on, the earlier you get to book all that extra fun stuff. New cruisers will be able to start booking these activities 75 days out on the dot. You can also cheat the system a little bit if you don't mind splurging by booking a concierge stateroom, which will give you a lot of extra privileges, including an earlier activities booking window. But that's, I mean, that's hardly a cheat because it just is insanely expensive. <laughs> now, step two, pay off your cruise. While Disney Cruise Line lets you make payments on your cruise to help best fit your specific vacation budget, you do need to have your cruise entirely paid off before you can start making those extra reservations. So if you know there's an activity you don't want to miss out on, make sure any outstanding payments are settled before your booking window time arrives. Step three, wait until the clock strikes midnight. When I say 75 days on the dot, I mean on the dot. Your booking window, again, all depending on your Castaway Club membership, will go live right at midnight Eastern. So make sure you're logged into the Disney Cruise Line website at midnight. Step four, book. All right, now we're getting somewhere. In order to make a new activity reservation, go to the My Plans tab. This is gonna give you an overview of your bare bones itinerary so far. Choose the day you wanna make your reservation and click the Add Activities option. Suddenly you'll see a whole list of premium cruise activities. So scroll down to your number one priority option first and add it to your plans. Step five, don't give up. Even if you're having internet trouble on the night you're supposed to secure those activity reservations or the activity you were wanting simply books up too quickly, don't lose hope. Just keep checking back to see if any availability does open up later on since people can and will make cancellations as their plans change too. So what's better than ending your day with fancy dining? How about starting your day with it? There are four different types of premium restaurants across the Disney Cruise Line. It could be Palo, Palo Steakhouse, or Enchante, or Remy, depending on what cruise ship you're on. And each of the premium adults-only restaurants has a brunch option available for cruises that are four nights or longer. If you're doing a quick two to three night cruise, brunch probably won't be an option that you can book. But if it is an option, brunch is typically cheaper, yet still gives you the chance to dine on some really high-end stuff. Here's the catch though, brunch books up even faster than dinner does at these restaurants, so you're gonna wanna prioritize this reservation first when booking your extra activities. That being said, if you don't snatch up a reservation in time for a premium brunch or dinner, then talk to a host at the front of the restaurant upon embarking on the ship to see if you can put your name on a first come first served wait list. In some cases, you'll be added to a list, which may or may not have a spot for you, but sometimes you might actually be given a return time to come back to the restaurant during your cruise, which means that you're in. Never hurts to check. Now, I've been lucky enough to have brunch at Remy recently, and I hadn't had brunch at Remy before. It is exquisite. I'm not a huge Remy fan for dinner. I would prefer to go to Palo, but for brunch, it's excellent. Highly recommended. Now, don't forget to use the carpets to help you get around. Yeah, I promise this makes sense. There's so much to look at when you get on a Disney cruise, but while you're busy looking up at everything, don't forget to look down too. Throughout Disney's cruise ships, you'll generally find a variety of carpet designs, and each is meant to transition you into a different space or guide you around the ship or immerse you in the theming. Now, that's right, carpets can actually be a map. If you're getting overwhelmed trying to find your way back to your room, just look down. The carpets in the stateroom hallways generally feature stars or Mickey heads if you're cruising on the Wish. If the stars or Mickey heads are pointing straight ahead, meaning the peak of the star or the ears of good old Mick are pointing forward in the direction you're walking, then you're walking forward. And if the stars are not pointing straight, then you're headed aft. And on the Wish, you can look down to find out which floor you're on. On deck six and seven, you may spot pumpkins or snowflakes since those floors are themed to Cinderella and Frozen. Decks 10 and 11 have seashells for the Little Mermaid and Moana. 
And don't forget to get the free stuff right off the bat. There's so much to do before your ship sets sail, including free tours and contests that you're only going to find when you first embark. Typically, there are a few tours available on board each Disney cruise ship that you don't even need to worry about pre-registering for. All you need to do is show up for them on time, and they're really, really interesting. There's a general walking tour of the ship made for all ages, and another ship tour for those aged 18 and up called Art of the Theme Show, which goes more in-depth talking about the details and inspiration of the ship through the eyes of an Imagineer. You can also attend Kids Club Open Houses. That allows adults to get a sneak peek at those super awesome kids-only spaces before all the fun begins. Usually, this open house will be available more than once throughout the duration of your trip, and I really recommend going to one if you have a kid who's maybe a little scared to go to the Kids Club. Sometimes it's easier to do it if you have a parent with you the first time. So go with them and explore those Kids Clubs. Maybe they'll meet a couple kids while they're there with you at the open house, and it'll make their transition to going to the Kids Clubs a little bit less scary. Now, I know some of you are like, uh, your kid was scared to go to the Kids Club. I didn't see my kid for the whole cruise, but that doesn't happen for everybody. (laughs) My kid did not want to go to the kids club. He was definitely scared. So it's one of those situations where you just got to know, you know, you got to know your kid. Now on embarkation day, the census spot and salon also has an open house that features tours of the facility. One of the biggest reasons you're going to want to go to this tour though, is for the raffle. Yeah. Remember me talking about how expensive those spa treatments are? Well, you can enter this raffle and if you win, you get a free onboard credit to use for a free massage. So what's there to lose? Even if you don't wind up winning anything, you may receive a special incentive or discount if you book a spa appointment during the open house. Also, this is a good time to book your rainforest room appointments if you want to try the rainforest room or if you want to get rainforest room for the duration of your cruise. This is a good time to do it because those are limited. Now, you're going to want to have your navigator app handy to make sure you don't miss out on when and where these tours are happening. So the best tip I have for you is when you get to the terminal, go ahead and switch switch your navigator app into onboard mode. It will find the Wi-Fi on the ship and you'll be able to see your whole cruise's itinerary. That's when that whole thing is going to populate. You know, you've been looking at the navigator app for the last like two years, just watching the little countdown. Now you're going to get to see your whole cruise. You're going to get to see what events are happening, what activities are happening. So go through the list while you're sitting there waiting in the terminal to get on the ship and then you don't have to waste that time once you get on. So what else can you accomplish before your ship sets sail? Well, a lot of stuff really, but you'll have to head over to the guest services right when you board to make sure to get everything squared away. On the magic, wonder, dream, and fantasy, guest services is on deck three midship in the lobby. Meanwhile, on the Disney Wish, guest services is on deck four midship. When you go to guest services, they can help you sort out any inquiries you might have upon boarding. This includes exchanging foreign currency, if you weren't able to do that before your cruise, requesting pack and plays, bed railings, diaper genies for your stateroom, changing your rotational dining schedule, if possible, searching the lost and found if you've misplaced something, and other general onboard port of call concerns that you may need an extra hand with. You can also call the guest services phone line from your stateroom if that's easier for you. And while some inquiries can only be handled right when you board, like making those rotational dining schedule changes, guest service desk is open and available 24 hours a day for other questions and concerns that might pop up. So where are the best places to watch the deck shows? Whether it be Mickey's Sail Away Party, Pirate Night, or Frozen Deck Party, or something else, you're going to want to make sure you and your family can see what's going on over at the cruise deck's main stage. So let's track down the best places to see these specialty cruise shows. A lot of them only happen once. While getting up close to the stage is fun, if you can make it over to the pool deck early enough before the show starts, typically I think I prefer finding a spot on deck 12 even more. Not only is it less crowded, but you'll get a better view of of the whole picture, including the stage, the funnel vision screen, the fireworks, and all the people down below. I'd recommend finding a spot for the festivities maybe 15 to 20 minutes before they begin, just so you're not scrambling to find a good vantage point at the very last second. So there is so much happening in the Disney Cruise Line realm this year. Make sure you keep checking back here with us as we continue to learn more about what's to come, including more mega ship secrets in need of revealing. And don't forget to download our ultimate DCL digital guide for absolutely free over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash cruise planning. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.